everyone my name is Andrea. if you don't know me you should subscribe but today i'm going to be doing a book review on the stolen air by holly black i want to say this video will be no spoilers until the very end i have one thing i want to talk about that would be spoiler but i'll tell you before i get there Jumping right in, The Stolen Air is by Holly Black in her The Folk of the Air world, her Elfheim world. Um, so we know the story of Jude and Cardin in The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, The Queen of Nothing, and How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories. And now she has came back to the world and written a few years down the line when Oak is 17, he is Prince of Elfheim and he has gotten himself into a bit of trouble. <laughs> Basically what this book is about from the synopsis is we are following Rin, Queen Surin um, from the Court of Teeth. She was a character who appeared in The Queen of Nothing and had not a big role, but there was a particular scene that sort of would have set up for a future for her to potentially come back. And so now we find Surin wanting to bring down Lady Noor, who is her mother and who is somebody who is a ruler in the Court of Teeth. Oak, on the other hand, also has his own reasonings to accompany Surin on this journey, kind of force her into this journey with him and both of them are working towards defeating Lady Noor but for very different reasons and what I found really interesting is that from the synopsis and from all the promo of The Stolen Air we were never told you know as the reader why Oak wants to do this and I feel like we've all assumed things like it's just like you know, Lady Nora is a problem for Jude and Cardin, and it's a problem for what where we left off in Queen of Nothing. But when I started reading the book, and there's actually like another reason why Oak is trying to do this and trying to go on this journey, I thought that was really clever, and I did not expect it. And I also felt like getting to know Oak and Surin was very interesting. Um, I, for some reason, thought that Oak was going to be the main character as in we were gonna get his point of view and we don't, we get Surin's point of view, but it kind of makes sense because in The Girl Prince we didn't get Cardin's point of view, we got Jude's, and now we have Surin, a new female protagonist, and I feel like that's very interesting that now not only are we seeing Elfheim from another view that's not Jude, we're also seeing it from someone who is part of the face. She's Surin is part of the world in her own special kind of way that I will leave you to find out in the book. But something we already know about her is like she, Surin is blue. She has very pale blue corpse-like kind of skin and she has really sharp pointy teeth. She has fey ears and she has blue hair. So very different than Jude and I mean she fits right into fairy. But she also grew up with just a really sad upbringing that we learn more about and dive into in this book. And I gave this book five stars. I wasn't sure for a little bit how I was going to feel about it. I feel like when you go into a sequel to a really big series, basically like a companion series, I feel like it could really let down a lot of readers. But for me, I was just happy to be back in the world and Holly Black writes fairy so particularly amazing she just knows how to write about fairies and about folk and the way she describes how everything looks how things taste what the fairies do how they speak it's just so so good and holly black is the queen of fairy no one can tell me otherwise no one can do what she has done with fairies i'm sorry but nobody could do that so I gave it five stars. I felt like there were parts of the book that were a little bit dragged out and slower because it's kind of set up as one of those books where the two characters, you learn a little bit about them and then there's a quest that they need to go on and then the majority of the book is them going on a quest and then the climax of the book is, you know, secrets being revealed, everything comes out and you figure out what is going to happen, who was lying. <laughs> who's gonna die, just everything like that. And that was definitely how this book was. Plot wise, I felt like it was a solid plot. There were some things that I was just thinking, couldn't we, you know, have went around this? Um, and you kind of have to take certain things as in some things that maybe Oak isn't telling his sister Jude. You're like, but why wouldn't he just tell her this? And Jude is brought up a lot in this book, but we don't actually see Jude and Cardin, and that's not a spoiler that they're brought up, but it 
we just don't actually physically see them in the book but they are acknowledged and i've seen people kind of having discourse on this that like i had to read a whole book and jude and cardin weren't in it but why would they be when holly black is writing a new story a new character's journey i think it was a nice choice that jude and cardin weren't in the book because we got to really know oak and surin and they got to stand on their own two feet or two feet and two hooves for oak because he has hooves <laughs> instead of feet but uh, i actually did like that i liked that they were mentioned but i liked also that we didn't take see them they didn't take away from the rest of the story now i'm not saying that in the next book i don't want to see them because i better see them and i think i'm gonna see them anyway but yeah plot wise i felt like it was pretty solid and it makes sense especially um, it didn't seem like she was going back too much and kind of covering her tracks and just making a story out of nothing where there shouldn't have been anything. I feel like it was very seamless of a continuation of the world. And character wise, I loved Oak and Surin, and I think Oak surprised me the most because we didn't know that much about Oak from The Folk of the Air. We didn't know a lot because he was a child. He was really young and he didn't get a lot of page time. He had, you know, his big break, his big moments, but we still didn't know him as a person, as a character. And so Seeing him through Saren's eyes is really cool, I think, and I did end up loving Oak. He's just, he's exactly what you think he would be because he was kind of raised by Jude and Cardin, you know, is an example for him. And so Oak is a prince. He's very, like, gets what he wants when he wants it. But he also has some other facets of himself I feel like I didn't expect. And they all are just so authentic and make sense for his character. Surin, on the other hand, is kind of brand new to us. We don't know that much about her. We know like a couple details. So getting to know her was also something very special for me. I personally really liked her. I feel like she's a very solemn character and she is it even says in the synopsis that she's been alone she's been um basically living in a forest hiding from the storm hag who wants her lady nor wants her every like people are trying to kill her and then she runs into oak and then they mutually agree to go on this journey and take down lady nor and so getting to know surin we got a prologue that tells us a little bit about her past kind of reflects i think how jude's first chapter is in the cruel prince which i thought was really cool and then as we're going through the stolen air we do have a multi-timeline just for certain so we have her in the present telling the main story and then we do get chapters interweaved throughout the book that are her past and things from when she was younger that she had to go through or moments that she had met oak when they were younger all of that i thought was really good and it just overall brought this book to a five star for me and I think what made me really love it was the ending and how Holly Black still surprised me and still pulled out some deceits and trickery and I was here for it. There was like romance and I also did like that. Okay, I'm here for it. But there wasn't it in a way that you think because Surin has just like never been loved by anybody so she doesn't even know how to take kindness, how to take things from people when they want to just do something nice for her. And there was just a few moments in this book that I was just like, ah. like, you know, kicking my feet, screaming, crying, throwing up because Oak and Zirin are like so cute. I think that's all my thoughts for the non-spoiler part. So if you have any questions and things I didn't address, please let me know in the comments. There probably is some stuff that I'm missing. But overall, just know it was a solid book. I really enjoyed it. Fans of The Cruel Prince will love it. And I think new people coming into the world should definitely read The Cruel Prince first. Um, but once they get through that, this is a great companion series or great sequel series. And I love Surin. She's a baddie. She is my love, my queen. I love her. So I'm going to go into a couple spoilers and then I will be done. But definitely comment down below if you have any questions or how you felt. What did you rate Stolen Air? Let me know. But I'm going to go into spoilers now in 3, 2, 1. Okay. Spoiler time. I'm going to put the book down now. We know what I'm talking about. If you're here, you know. Okay. I only want to talk about basically one big thing. Maybe two. But the main one being the ending. Surin. I need to go to the page. I need to go to the page. Hold on. Hold on. Oak is literally yelling at Surin. Talk to me. He shouts. Ren. Ren. Coward that I am. I flee. My heart thundering. My hand shaking. 
but I can't pretend that I don't like the sound of him screaming my name. I book endings like the last line of a book can make or break it for me i am one of those people if the last line of the book doesn't hit doesn't isn't a banger like i'm not gonna like the book it's gonna dock a whole star for me so that's what made me raise it a star i actually think it was gonna be a four star for me but then the last line the whole thing with certain made me just love it so much she's such a baddie whenever she killed lady nor she was just like i want this bitch dead in her head she just said that she died she's ash no it's like ugh, her power I love Saren. Also really love Oak and I feel like he, you know, put himself in the situation that he's in and lied to Saren the whole time. I feel like they could have communicated better. I see why Oak didn't tell Saren that she was the one that had the heart, but I still feel like they could have gone around that and that's kind of what Oak gets, but now I'm thinking that it's set up for Jude to come in and get her little brother. She is not going to just let anyone take Oak take the prince of elfheim so i feel like we're seeing june and cardin in the next book i can't wait i also could see surin you know really really early on getting oak out of prison like letting him out and completely being logical and reasoning with him and understanding but i don't know maybe not but that's pretty much the only things that i wanted to talk about spoiler wise for the book again let me know in the comments if you want to talk spoilers put like a little warning spoiler at the top of your comment and then we can talk but that's gonna be it for this video so i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video bye